Sometimes a little historical perspective helps us to appreciate things, things that maybe are easily taken for granted. The reason we celebrate Reformation is we have a tie with it that ties back much further. The Reformers weren't coming up with new teachings like I mentioned earlier. Take a look at that with me. Take a look at, at that reality as we look back to Jesus' words here in John chapter 8. Two topics at the heart of the Reformation are found here in John chapter 8. They are they capsulize um, why the Reformation, which God brought about some 500 years ago, means so much and we celebrate still today. One is truth, and the other is brought when a human heart knows truth. It is freedom. Go ahead and click for us, Sergio, so that you can see those in front of us. Let's start with the, the second of those. And let's try to, to maybe put it in, in terms in a, a way that can, can relate especially to us modern-day Americans. I can't remember if I put this up here. Click once more for us, Sergio. Yeah. In this great nation of ours, there are those who are free and those who are not free. Let me go up that. Those who are, are not free here is not referring to those who are in a jail or prison or in some way, other way physically confined. I know that they have limits of, of not being able to go where they want or maybe do what they want, but, but the reality is still true that's stated here. For even those who are in jail or prison, there are those who are free there and there are those who are, are not free. What marks the difference between the two groups that I am speaking of. One group of individuals knows the truth at the heart of life, and the other group doesn't. There was a group with Jesus this day in John chapter 8 that weren't free. They didn't have the truth. Why were they missing out on on the freedom and the truth and missing out on the, the freedom that comes with it. The issue at the root of everything for them was this, a denial of sin and a denial of the confinement that comes along with sin. They stake a claim. Go ahead. Flip for us, Sergio. They stake this claim. We, we have never been slaves. Now, if that is a, a claim about something a physical state, a physical reality, then that, that's simply not true. Israel's history shows that as a people, they were slaves. They were enslaved in Egypt. Now, if their claim is about a spiritual stand, a, a, a spiritual reality, then, then that too is proven wrong from Scripture. And I think the more I, I look at this section, the more I think that that's really what they're, they're getting at with their statement, the, the spiritual side. But even their own Scriptures, what we today describe as the part of God's Word, the Old Testament, the, they had the Scriptures, they had God's Word to tell them that this claim was not true. In Psalm 51, we're told, Surely we are sinful from the time our mothers conceive us. And the extent of, of the way that that enslaves us or binds us is told in Genesis chapter 8 where the extent of our fallenness is described in these terms. Every inclination of everyone's heart is evil from childhood. And so the result is they didn't start off free. And neither did any of us in life. Our God had to break us free from the, the sin and the, the darkness and the, the unbelief and the, the condemnation in which we live. Psalm 102 states that reality for us like this in very, very powerful words. Go ahead, Sergio, click it for us. Let this be written for a future generation <coughs> that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high from heaven he viewed the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners. The truth with which each one of us must come to grips with 
begins with the fact that we were born, that we started life bound, enslaved, captive to sin and unbelief. So, if we want to end in freedom, we have to begin with this truth that we started off life enslaved. Jesus laid out this truth to the, the group of people, one, one part of the people that were before him. We heard some believed in him, but, but one part of the people were challenging him. And so he, he laid out this truth that we're talking about for them. Go ahead, click for us, Sergio. And it kind of, his words kind of fit together like a chain that all ties in. And he, he talks about the sin that we all have. And he talks about the captivity that that, that brings. And he talks about if that's the, the way that you remain, an individual remains and they aren't freed from sin, then they are separated from God and they are instead bound for hell. Some people deny that first half over there. And so sadly the reality is that the second, the second part is still, is still wrapped. <coughs> They're still entangled in all of it. But what if, what if somebody, what if there's someone who who knows this entire truth. But that's all that they know of God's truth. <coughs> you see, that was the situation that Martin Luther found himself in. He, he knew what God's law said. He, he admitted his sin, but he didn't yet know the, the good news. And so he, he described that time, and have you heard this before? He described that time like, like being boxed in. He said, there's wall number one. God is holy and hates sin. I know this. There's wall number two. I am a sinner. I know this. There's wall number three. God says the wages of sin is death. And there's wall number four. Then the conclusion is God must condemn me. Think of the, the torment that one is left in if that is all that they know of God's truth. Martin Luther penned the words to describe that time in a hymn. He said, Fast bound in Satan's chains I lay, death brooded darkly o'er me. Deep and deeper still I fell, life had become a living hell, so firmly sin possessed me. My own good works availed me not. My fears increased till sheer despair left naught but death to be my share and hell to be my sentence. That's only part of God's truth. As God brought Martin Luther to know through his word. Jesus here in John chapter 8 speaks of a second group. They start out the same, but then a change takes place. Go ahead and click for us, Sergio, to show up. This group that Jesus describes is set free. And in the terms he uses, is brought into God's family, connected with God, brought into life with God that will last forever. And how does that, that change to, to having God's truth and, and having the freedom that comes with it? How does that, that take place? The way these two, truth and freedom, come to reside in human hearts is through, is through the word that we've been talking about today. Go ahead, click. Click over, Sergio. A quote that, that's always stood with me is one that I saw a few years back at Reformation time. Reformation begins with the quiet collision of a sinful heart and the Word of God. The freedom Jesus speaks of here in John chapter 8 begins with, begins a, it begins with a chain of truths that goes back to verse 30 that I mentioned to introduce this section. Go ahead. Click it up for us, Sergio, so we see a picture of it. <coughs> Working backward. Freedom from guilt comes along with freedom from sin. And that only happens through knowing the truth that, that Jesus is the, the rescuer that God promised. And that's brought to us through the Word. And that truth is planted in our hearts, connecting it all through God's Word. Think also of your baptism, because there, God's powerful Word is at work, and He tells us there too. He brings His 
truth that along with it brings the blessings of forgiveness of sins. And it brings people into His family and brings people freedom from guilt and an assurance of eternal life with our God. Jesus' word to you and me today is, if you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus has freed you through faith in Jesus. You are free from sin. You are free from guilt. And so you are free from the need to fear death any longer because you are free from hell's punishment. You are free to live forever with God. You are also free to thank God now, to praise God now, and to hold on to His Word because that's at the heart of everything. Attacks will still come from your flesh, and from the world, and from the old evil foe, Satan. Be ready for the fight that we must fight in order to hold on to the truth of God with everything that comes along with it. Jesus addresses this issue for us when he says, Remain in my word. So, he takes this, and then, go ahead, click for us, Sergio. And he adds... And he has an encouragement. Circle back. Remain in my word. He's saying, keep on hearing my word. Because through it, you keep on... That's how I, I strengthen the faith I've given you, to keep on believing my word and the truth that brings freedom with it. It's going to be an ongoing battle. Because our sinful flesh never wants to admit our daily sins. And so, God's Word is needed. Circle back to it. God's Word is needed to bring us truth, to correct us when we go wrong, to bring us to daily repentance for our sins so that we're, we're kept in His truth. Remaining in Jesus' Word is a fruit of faith, and it happens only through the power that He gives. It can't come from a power that's generated from within us. It comes from the source of power that He gives, His Word. Kids, come on up. Let me give you a little example to show that. If you want to see see up close what, what we got here. Close them back and see what we got here too. Something tells me this is not going to work to provide any power. Can anyone explain to me why this is it's plugged in? Can anyone explain to me why this is not going to work to supply any power? <coughs> yeah. This is not a source of power. What do I have to do with this if I want to have power flowing to here? i got to plug this into a power source, the electricity coming from, from the wall, right? But this, this isn't going to bring any new power here, right? This can remind us of what God says. We can't get power from within ourselves for our faith. We have to go to a source that God has given to give us power and strength for our faith. Do you know what the source that God gives us for that is? It's His Word. It's His Word. So stay connected and keep on hearing God's Word. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks. Remain in my word, Jesus tells us. In other words, keep on hearing my word and believing that word. The word has always been the source of truth for God's people of all time. The word with the faith that it brings and the, the freedom that comes along with knowing his saving truth. Hearing God's Word is what ties us back further than the Reformation. It ties us back to God's people of all times. Just think about that connection. And then let me give you this example to, to kind of tie it all together. Going way back to words the Lord used Moses to record over 3,000 years ago. What I'm going to talk to you about is called the Great Shema. That's the way that the beginning Hebrew of this verse from Deuteronomy chapter 6 that verse 4 begins. Shema. 
And the Old Testament believers, if they, if they knew any Bible passages by heart, they would have known this one. They learned it when they were very little. Hear, O Israel. I think you can put it up for us, Sergio. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God. The Lord is one. Hearing is what the Lord's people of all time have been about. Hearing who alone is God. Hearing this special name for God, which maybe in our ears doesn't ring with as much meaning instantly as it would to someone who spoke Hebrew. But that name, the Lord, tells you more than just a name. It is a description of what our God is like. It tells you that He is faithful to every promise and every word that He has ever spoken. So hear. Hear what He has passed on through generation after generation down to today. Hearing is what the Lord's people have always been about. Hearing. Not feeling who God is. Hearing. Hearing, not touching who God is. Hearing. Hearing, not seeing who God is. Hearing, to hear what this is teaching us. Treasure God's Word. The Word of God brings light. It doesn't surprise us then when in the New Testament we hear, faith comes from hearing. The message, and the message is heard through the Word of Christ. And over and over again, we hear the encouragement. Let he who has ears hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to God's people. Hear the Lord. Trust in Him who became flesh to rescue you out of the darkness of your sin and unbelief. Trust Him, humiliated to death, even death on the cross, in order to be your Redeemer, your Savior. He's the one who has kept His every promise to you. Trust Him to hear your every prayer. Trust Him that He knows. He knows every plot and plan of enemies that would attempt to destroy or overthrow His good will. And he scoffs, the Bible says. He laughs at such plans against his will. He's in control. Trust him to be in control. As he has promised, not only of things on a global impact happenings, but also he knows every hair that falls from your head. He knows. He is the Lord in charge of all. Always loving you forgiving you through the faith in Jesus that he has brought you to have, listening to you and me who call on him in Jesus' name. Oh, that, that is news worth hearing. Hearing and holding and holding up as a banner for others to see who are still not yet free. After all, how can they call on the one that they have not heard of. Let's give them something worth hearing. And, and whether they believe or not, God only knows. And God works to accomplish that in human hearts. But we can give them something to really hear. The message of our living Lord. Let's give them His word of truth. Amen.